everyone keeps saying that AI tools will soon replace developers. But what if I told you that this is kind of already happening? I've just discovered a workflow that lets you build complete full stack apps with literally zero coding skills completely for free using just two simple AI tools. And if you don't believe me, I've just built this app that lets you submit your details and that emails you my free notion guide I make for this video, or even this insane course dashboard with registration, login, paid subscriptions done by PayPal, and courses you can watch directly on the platform. Everything you see here was built from ground up using AI without a single line of code. Like today I'm going to show you how to build apps like these from design to front end, back end to finally publishing it to a domain. So whether you're building these apps for yourself or planning to become a no code AI developer, this video is for you. But before we start, if by the end of this video you found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and comment what you're going to be building with it. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. First, let me show you the logic behind building these apps before we get into the detailed tutorial. So imagine you're opening a restaurant. The first step is to design and build the place, set the tables, lights, layout. Well, that's going to be the front end of our app, the part that users see and interact with. In this example, it's this form where you enter your name and email, press access guide, and instantly see this email send message. We'll build this part using Google AI Studio. We're just going to explain the app we want in simple language and Gemini is going to create it for us. Now that your restaurant's ready, you're going to need a waiter, someone to take orders, send them to the kitchen and bring the meals back out. Well, this is going to be a webhook. It connects everything users see to what's happening in the background, sending information back and forth, kind of like a waiter. So when a user presses access your guide, the name, email and message are sent to the backend through this webhook and we're going to set it up using a free tool called made.com. Now, what's a restaurant without a working kitchen? That's going to be a backend and we'll build it using made.com. Once it receives your data from the webhook, it can perform any automations you want with it, like sending you this personalized email with my link or adding you straight into my Sheets database. You can add any integrations you want here by just adding simple modules. It's going to be kind of like a chef preparing your meal. When your dish is ready, the waiter brings it to your table and that's exactly what happens in our app. Once the backend finishes all of the automations, it's going to send the response back to our frontend, letting it know how everything went down. In this case, it tells the app if the email was sent successfully or failed to send so it can display the corresponding message. So this way you're only going to see the success message if everything worked correctly and an error message if something went wrong. So now that you understand how everything works, let's go ahead and build it step by step together. You'll find all of the prompts, links and a template you can copy directly into your Google AI Studio in my free Notion guide. So make sure to grab that before we dive in. This way you can also see how the app works in practice. In this video, we'll only be building this demo app and next week I'll show you how to build this full course dashboard with authentication, subscriptions and a PayPal integration. So this way you can grasp the basics first and it doesn't get too overwhelming. Before building anything, we need a Google Cloud project. That's where we'll deploy our app and store our assets. To do this, you're just going to sign in or create a free account in Google Cloud. And now I'll just go to console, open IM and admin settings and click to create a new project. Give it a name, click create, and that's it. If you want to include any media in your app, like images, videos, and music, you'll need to host them inside this project first. And for that, we're going to create a new storage bucket. It might seem a little bit complicated at first, but trust me, it's super easy to set up and you only need to do it once. So with your project selected at the top, you're going to go to cloud storage, buckets, and create a new bucket. Give it any name and leave every other setting as default until you reach access settings. Here you're just going to make sure you have enforced public access prevention unchecked. Click continue and now to publish it you're going to go to permissions, grant access, type in all users and in roles you're going to select object reader and save. 
And just like that, your bucket is ready and you can upload any files to embed them into your app. My app has this logo at the top and a favicon, so I'm just going to upload both here under objects and we're done. I'll show you how to add them to your app in a moment. And now that your project is set up, your first step is designing the front end. And to do this, you're going to head over to Google AI Studio and go to the build section and just type out your prompt. I'm just going to say, create a form page for my users to receive their free notion guide with name email and optional questions uh, once the user submits the form display email sent if an error occurs display we can send your email and i'll also include some styling comments like colors borders and animations and then just send it in now to add my logo to the top of the form i'm just going to go back to the bucket we created previously click on the three dots next to the image i want to use copy the public url and in Google AI Studio say, include my logo at the top and then just paste in the link with just COVID. You can do the same with any other file. Just ask Gemini to add it and then paste in the link. From him, you can ask Gemini to make adjustments and test your demo app until you're happy with how everything looks and works across all devices. Usually it takes at least a couple of prompts to get it perfect. And now for the final step on our front end is to make sure that the information users enter into our form is correct before we send it to the back end. Uh, to do this, I'm going to say add real time verification for the email address and name. It should start with an uppercase letter, show a red border across if it's incorrect, and add a green border with a check mark when it's valid. Make sure no forms are sent in empty. I'm going to send this prompt in, and now the form validates inputs in real time, making sure the date is clean before it gets sent off. Now that our front end is designed, let's set up our back end. You're going to head over to make.com with my link in the description and create a free account. This video is not sponsored, but you'll get 1000 free credits a month with my link enough to run multiple apps like these. Then you're just going to head over to scenarios and click to create a new one. And as a first step, you're going to add a webhook, select custom webhook, click add and give it a name. Now we just need to tell our webhook what data to collect from our app. In this case, it's going to be the three form fields, the name, email, questions, and suggestions. So in advanced settings under specifications, I'll add the same field names in text format. Name is required, email is required, and questions and suggestions as optional. Save everything, and now you're ready to add another module. You probably have ChatGPT in one window, Gemini in another, and maybe Claude and Perplexity on the side. Well, let me introduce you to Chatronics, a platform that brings all top AI models into one single workspace. So instead of paying hundreds of dollars in monthly subscriptions and bouncing between different AI tools, you can just sign up to Chatronics and have access to ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, Perplexity, Grok, DeepSeek, and more. And it's not just about convenience, it's filled with mind-blowing features like Turbo Mode that allows you to send the same query to multiple AI models and compare the answers side by side. One perfect answer that automatically blends the best parts of each response into one reply, a prompt library with over 550 ready-to-use prompts, and a prompt organizer that lets you reuse the best prompts without digging through old chats. I love Gemini, but when it comes to writing, I still have to use tools like ChatGPT. Well, now I just paste my messy notes into Chatronics with Turbo Mode and get the best of both worlds with Gemini's intelligence and ChatGPT's writing abilities. So whether you're an entrepreneur, using it for work or just a student, Chatronix saves you the hassle of switching between different tools and paying a dozen of AI tool subscriptions. So go ahead and try it out with my link in the description. You'll get 50% off your first month with the promo code your AI workflow. And let's get back to the video. For the next step, I'll add Gmail, send an email. This will automatically send the free notion guide to the user. In the to field, you're going to select the same email address you received from the form. You'll see it highlighted here in red under the webhook. Next, add a subject line. You can even personalize it with the user's name we got from the form, just like I did here. And for the email content, you can either write plain text or choose HTML for a more beautifully designed email. In my case, of course, I used Gemini Canvas to design it. I just asked it to design this email template with HTML, include my logo at the top with the same bucket link we used in Google AI Studio. 
I asked it to include my Notion guide link and pasted it here. And now I'm just going to hit share, copy this HTML code and paste it in the content field in the Gmail step in Make. Now to personalize the template, it's going to be similar. I'm just going to scroll down to find the name here. You'll see it's highlighted in black and I'm just going to replace it with the same name we received via Webhook and hit save. Now that our email sending is configured, I'd like to add everyone who registers to my database to collect leads and answer you guys' these questions. To do this, I'm first going to head over to Google Drive and create a new folder and inside it, make a new sheet spreadsheet with the same columns as the form fields, the name, email, and the questions. And as the third step in make, I'm going to add Google Sheets, add a row. This is going to create a new entry in our database every time the form is submitted. And in the spreadsheet ID, I'm going to locate the same file and then just match the webhook fields with the corresponding columns in Sheets. And now our final step is to send a response back to our app, letting it know what went down in the background. To do this, you're going to add the last webhook module and choose webhook response. And the first thing you'll see here is the status code. Now, this number tells your app whether the backend action was successful or something went wrong. You can enter any number here about 100, but usually 200 plus means success and 400 indicates an error. You can also send back any custom message message or user details in the body. I'm just going to say status 200 and for the body I'm going to say email send and save it. And now if something goes wrong our app also needs to know about this and to handle that I'm going to right click on the send an email step, select add an error handler and in status this time I'm going to type 404 and in the body include the error message I want to return. And this way, if the email fails to send, your app will display the error message instead of just freezing. Now we have a beautifully designed app and a fully working backend, and we just need to connect them together. To do this, first head over to Make and copy the webhook URL in our first step. And now go to Google AI Studio and tell Gemini when to activate it. I'm just going to say when the user clicks the submit button, activate this webhook and then paste in the URL. Next, we need to define the data format so both sites speak the same language. So I'm just going to type it expects the data in the following formats. Go back to the webhook and make the advanced settings and copy the data structure we created earlier with all of the fields and paste it in here. Now let's tell our app how to interpret each response using the status codes we set up earlier. I'm just going to say if the hook returns 404, let the user know we couldn't send the email and send them back to the form to edit it and if it returns 200 display email sent successfully finally it's always good for you as a developer to know what's happening behind the scenes so to do this i'm going to add console log all responses along with their body but don't display them to the user now every response we receive will also appear here in the console perfect for debugging and testing your app now send the prompt in and once everything is ready, let's go ahead and test it. Go over to your scenario and make and click run once to test it. Now you're just going to submit your form in the app preview and if everything was set up correctly, you'll see the email sent response in the console and a success message will appear in your app. You'll also receive the personalized email we made to the address you entered and the Sheets database is also updated with your new entry. In Make, you'll also see that each step was completed because everything is highlighted in green. Now, if you're building something for the first time, it might not be so perfect on the first try. It certainly takes just a little bit of practice and then you're going to be a pro at it. Once everything is set up and working correctly, you'll need to publish your app and make it live for everyone to use. To do this, you'll first need to deploy your app to Google Cloud and then activate your make.com scenario to handle all of the backend actions actions automatically. First, let's activate the backend, go back to make.com and set your automation status to active so it runs quietly in the background every time someone submits your form. Again, you'll get 1,000 free credits with my link in the description, more than enough to run an app like these every month. Once that's done, switch over to Google AI Studio and click on the rocket icon at the top. Choose the project you've just created in Google Cloud and hit deploy.
And in just a few moments, your app is live with the shareable link you can send to anyone. Our app then works perfectly with this link, but what if you decide to connect it to a custom domain? Well, let me show you how you can configure one. Once your app is deployed, you're going to click to open it in Google Cloud and from there go to the networking tab. Under the custom domains on the right, you're going to click manage and at the top choose to add mapping. In the pop-up window, you're going to select the app we've just deployed and choose to verify a new domain. Enter your domain name here and click continue. Now, Google will ask you to verify if you own this domain. To do this, click the button to go to search console, enter your domain again, hit continue. And now to prove you the domain owner, just copy this text record Google generated and head over to your domain register. That's where you bought the domain. I'm just using Spaceship. Here, you're just going to locate the DNS settings and create a new text record. In the host, type ads. In the value, field just paste the verification link you've just copied from google and save the record now we're going to go back to google search console tab and click verify it might take some time to update the records depending on your register spaceship is almost instant now once you get this success message you're going to go back to cloud run hit refresh and now your domain shows as verified. Here you can either map your app to your main domain or a subdomain. I'll use the guides subdomain, so I'm just going to enter it here and click continue. If you prefer the main one, just leave it as blank. Now, depending on your app and domain provider, you might need to add a couple more records here. In my case, I'll just need this CNAME record. So I'll go back to Spaceship and add it and then press done in Google Cloud. Now, after that, I'm just going to refresh the page and you'll see that your domain is now starting to connect. This step usually takes from 10 minutes. Now, once it's done, you'll see this green check mark here. Click your link and your app is now live on your domain. So this is it for today's video. I hope you're just as excited as I am about this workflow. I have been using it a ton lately. And if you're watching this video from the future, I'll pop the video where we're going to build the advanced course dashboard right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.